Hey folks, it's Harry from Tabernity Barbecue. It's on the road again on Southwest, heading to Dallas this time for the HBBE Expo, one of the largest barbecue equipment manufacturers expo in America. I'm going to be cooking up a storm with the uh, folks at the Jealous Devil booth. So come see us at booth 911 uh, on the inside. We're also going to be cooking food on the outside, so come check us out. Social marketing rep, how to how to do everything, and uh, she's gonna put a little bit of cream cheese, a little bit of halib, a little sausage, smoky here. Take a piece of bacon, wrap it all, and uh, get some a uh, little bit of a bacon goodness onto the jalapeno popper here. Slip your daddy rum on it. So, right there, right? My beautiful ribs in the pig barrel cooker. Okay, here are the ribs cooked in the pig barrel. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful bark. Nice and tender. We're gonna get wrap them a little bit and then get ready to serve them. You wanna see my butt? It's a really jealous devil kind of smoke ring you see here, beautiful crimson ring. I'm here with Tiger and Tiger is our rep. You want to yes. describe what you do? I handle Jealous Devil's marketing, social media, um, and relationships with all of our retailers. And uh, today I'm apparently also handling learning how to, how to inject brisket from world famous Harry Sue. Everybody on the crew gets a chance to learn how to do a rider passage. So Tiger, you're going to get a rider passage this morning by me showing you how to inject the brisket. We're going to cook the brisket on this Kamado, insert it, and suck some of the liquid out. And then you gently push the plunger so that it, all the air comes out. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh not so hard. <laughs> it's okay. There will. Oh no, you got all over you now. Oh my god. So what you want to do is you want to in, uh, insert the uh, needle into the meat like so, right? Like about 30 degree. Gently push the plunger down. Okay, and then pull it out about half an inch. Put your finger over here. Pull it out. So you repeat this process until the syringe is empty and you refill it. Now the key is not to puncture the fat cat. Tiger is now going to inject all the brisket on one inch increments. So we're ready to put a rub on and we're going to use some beef rub. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, to Tiger, you want to shake the rub so that you loosen it. So shake it a little bit, loosen it. And then you want to do it in, a, in a, about eight inches above, right? So you kind of put it on like so. And you see how it becomes opaque. And then you stop and you gently pat it down, like so. Go ahead, pat it down gently, like a baby's bottom. So you don't want to press it hard, why? Because you, you inject it with a lot of liquid. So if you press it hard, it's gonna ooze out. So okay, good. now repeat the process exactly the same with the same muscle memory, and then get it nice, evenly distributed all over the brisket. So my seasoning uh, has been optimized to go twice. So that way, you get maximum flavor from all the dozen spices and herbs, and uh, We'll give the brisket a wonderful flavor towards the end. Tiger, you got your uh, knife ready. We're gonna teach you guys how to make ribs now. So go ahead, gently uh, cut open the package. And then uh, we'll pull the membrane. And all you need to do is uh, use a piece of paper towel and then feel for the where the membrane between the bone here. You just take your paper towel and then you just kind of peel it off. So I'm using a paper towel as a trick. Uh, you can use a butter knife if you want to. And what you do is you run your finger in like that, right, all the way. And when you get to the other side, right, you just pull it off using a paper towel. Woohoo! All right, congratulations, you have pulled your first membrane. You yeah. see, you see many trends 
go through the industry, right? In terms of styles of cooking. It's like don't get too high on the high, don't get too low on the low. Low, there you go. That's right. That's a good advice from an expert. So how do you pick a good rib is that you want the rib, right, to have this beautiful white marbling. Can you see that? So the marbling is where all the flavor is. So uh, this, these two racks of ribs are really good. So if I were competing, right, the part I would turn into the judges is not this part here. Yeah. This part is too meaty and there's no uh, fat. So I would pick among these two ribs, slabs of ribs, right? I would pick this piece here, right here. This would be a winning piece for the judges. This is a uh, insertion point to the pectoralis or the false lean. It's not really good eating, so if you want to kind of maybe run the knife and, and shave off a little bit here. It's not good eating because it's kind of sinewy. Now you're going to put the all-purpose on this side, uh, just one layer, just a thin layer. And once you get used to it, you can get it one time and that's okay. All right, let's move on to this one now. Same idea. Okay, here we go. So now we're applying now the chicken rub. Chicken rub on the meat side. A lot of teams are winning first place using this combo with all purpose and chicken. Wonderful. That's actually absolutely amazing. Test on that one now. Now that we're ready, we can uh, go ahead and uh, put on the hook and hang it. So we're ready to put the hooks on. We're going to cook this on pit barrel. So the way a rib is set up, right? So you have a big end here and a small end. Kind of like on your rib, the upper part of your chest is where the big bones are and the lower part is where the smaller bones are. So on this pig, this is a uh, left-handed uh, on the chest here. So the bone is on this side, the big ones are here. So you find a second bone here, and then go ahead and try to put a uh, uh, hook through it. Yeah, so you're gonna go kind of like this, kind of like this, so that it hooks up this way. So push it in this way, and now you're ready to hang. So pick it up and see how it looks like. Okay, so that's about right, right? Wonderful, like a pro, like a, like two, two big, two big, uh, fish that you caught before we put it in we need to see how hot how hot this thing is and we touch it and it feels hot it's, too, it's a little bit too hot so we just have to wait a little while for it to cool down so it should be basically a, you're able to put your touch here about a quarter second all right tiger we're gonna do a prime rib now and uh, we've got a beautiful prime rib here it's a choice prime rib angus and this is about how many pounds? I can't see. You can see how many pounds? Uh, 16. A little over 16. Okay, 16 pounder. And uh, go ahead and remove him on the packaging carefully with the big knife. There we go. Perfecto. Maybe get a paper towel and uh, and just kind of towel dry. I guess, yeah, you probably need some more paper towels. And you notice how Tiger carefully put the bag with the liquid into the trash? Because uh, this stuff is called the purge and it's got a lot of pathogens. So you don't want to wash your meat ever in the sink. You just want to towel it dry. And she's gently towering it dry so that we can begin to work on applying the seasoning. Maybe do a little bit of a light trim on this. We have a little bit of fat on the surface, am I correct? So what I like to do is uh, I like to trim away a little bit of the fat. So I'll let you trim it. So you gently shave it so that get rid of some of the fat. And so get down to the meat because I, I prefer to have the meat. This is, a, this is a, a bubba knife and the bubba knives are really, really great knives. So for those bubba knives, folks out there who are watching this video you know that the bubba knives can be used to shave pretty much anything so you see here right this is, uh, this is called silver skin so the silver skin is underneath the fat right so a lot of times we like to trim the silver skin off if you can so it takes a little bit of a finesse but if you want to try you can get some of the silver skin off without getting a lot of the meat off yeah there we go and you need a sharp knife to do that yeah that's perfect and john will guide you here so just pick out the rigger carefully yeah, fast side down yeah go ahead go ahead play, plop it on yeah Okay, full, full, roll, roll the uh, point so that it fits, yeah, push it in, get a little halfway down and then tuck it in because don't mind, mind your fingers. Alright, perfecto. So here's the pit barrel and uh, you're going to lift the lid up in the pit barrel and then just go ahead and hang the meat in the pit barrel. Alright, perfect. Let it go. And you're all set. Tiger's going to inject the uh, ribeye now. So you typically don't inject a uh, rib roast, but today we decided we'll do something special and uh, that will just give it give it even more flavor. Okay, so we're going to apply the beef wrap now. Nice seasoning on it. Add it down. Alright, we got the uh, hooks on to the entire 16 pound ribeye. And Tiger's got strong arms and she's going to drop it into the pit barrel. Right here, very carefully, we yeah. hung it in a pit barrel yeah. and we're gonna let it smoke and get all happy. This is our Argentinian style grill. We're doing a, a this is a 30 pound uh, piggy. And we'll flip it and mop it a little bit later. If you'll look in there, 
there's not a whole lot of charcoal yeah, yeah. yeah. all of that yeah. yeah. it's enough heat to small right? yeah. Yeah. yep uh, you got the fire break a line yep. side so it kind of radiates yep. the heat right so yep. a little bit of heat and how many hours on one of these uh yesterday we did one and it took oh, about four. four and a half hours one half give it a crunch here wait uh, ah oh, it's burnt oh, that's hot okay mm. a little nice crunch here yeah. This is Carson awesome. Rodizio, Blake Carson out of Memphis. For five hundred dollars, you two can open your own churrascaria at home. Yeah. And now we just want to season the inside with some salt. Okay, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Look at that. And you serve okay. it just like that. Salt okay, everybody, step up and grab, grab some of that picanha. So here's how a kilo steak looks like, and uh, this is USDA choice. So you, that's can buy, you can buy this already cut, but it's very hard to find in the store. Yes. Unless you're specialty order, because all the Brazilian uh, steakhouses they buy it ahead of time. So if you go to Restaurant Depot, you're not gonna find it, but you can actually trim it yourself. About 100 people at a barbecue. And on the outside is a little cooler, right? Yeah, I guess you can kind of. Okay, so the Seven Daddy inspired vegetables here. Uh, chef, uh, so what's your name? Josh. Okay. Chef Josh is going to do it on a pizza using some Slappy Daddy grilled vegetables and a little bit of uh, some Slappy Daddy barbecue rub love. All right, beautiful. So uh, this is what, what kind of fuel you're using? Yes, yeah. all propane. Now, if I want to buy one of these for my home, how much do they run? This is going to be five ninety nine right here, and the one over there that's a little bit smaller is two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Which one do you recommend? I like this one right here because you can run four different types of fuel up. You can do the propane, wood pellets, uh, wood, or charcoal. Okay. Now, is there a difference in the kind of fuel you use and the flavors you get from the pizza? Some people will say that the wood will give it a little bit more of a like wow, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. Chef Josh. Mm. All, right, so <laughs> All right, so we got some buffalo wing pizza here. Lucy's blue cheese and mozzarella with the folks here. Six hundred dollars gets you this kind of results here. It's amazing. All right, here's the uh, prime rib. It's cooked in the pit barrel, ready to be seared and uh, served to the public. <laughs> Cutting into one-inch cubes. All right, so Tiger is gonna try the ribeye she made. Oh, this is injected. Delicious. Cooked on the Kudu grill, and she's gonna pick the best piece. Absolutely amazing. Delicious. Spices are perfect for it. Super tender, super flavorful, and moist. My mom's favorite cut of steak, and one of mine, so it's delicious. Nice and juicy, too. <laughs> All right, great flavor. Amazing. <laughs> High quality restaurant. Yes. Uh, steakhouse, and paid $46 for the steak. That wasn't half as good as wow. the sample that okay. I just tried right now. It's so tender though. Yes, right? mom. Yep. Yep. Best meat here at the show. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you for the show. Woo!